Today, I would like to introduce power line optimization in PLS CAD. This power line optimization was performed in Oman on the Ibri Iski 400 kV power line. When we use a LiDAR survey in conjunction with PLS CAD on an existing line, we will always either improve the reliability of the line, network or circuit, or we'll increase the utilization of the line, network or circuit. In many cases, we'll do both. Reliability may be in terms of electrical clearance, whereby we will ensure that the voltage dependent clearance requirements are met for every object along the line route. Reliability may also be in terms of structural capacity, where the design limitations of all structures and cables are respected. Utilization refers to the amount of electrical load transfer that can be performed through the line, circuit or network. When we use LiDAR survey in conjunction with PLS CAD on a new line, the reliability, the utilization, they're already fixed. The last variable which we can influence, that's the capital construction cost. In use of PLS CAD and LiDAR will ensure the least cost construction while also ensuring proper utilization and reliability. So how do we carry out an optimization? Well, we start by capturing the survey data upon which to perform our optimization. Our equipment was mounted onto an aircraft and we captured imagery and LiDAR data of the power line corridor. We captured millions of survey points and thousands of images. These points and images are assembled in the PLS CAD model. We split the line into two sections, Ibri Iski West and Ibri Iski East. Ibri Iski West covers the first 122 kilometers, while Ibri Iski East covers the remaining 111 kilometers. Ibri Iski West has 1,405,600 survey points. Ibri Iski East has 2,136,280 survey points. Let's take a look at these models. We can look at the imagery and plan view for the whole of the route, 333 kilometers. Now what we need to remember is this isn't only imagery. It's a precise three-dimensional representation of the terrain, which we're going to see now in the tin model. So we can see all of the undulations of the terrain throughout the route. There's 333 kilometers and that's all represented. I can go and check certain areas of interest. I can also bring the imagery into the 3D view of the model. There we go. I can pan, rotate and zoom around this model. And I can look at areas of interest. Now because we've got an alignment, we can also generate a profile. And from that profile, we can go back to the 3D view. The key thing to remember once again, these points are not just a visual representation. Each point has been assigned the correct voltage dependent clearance. As such, we can ensure we get proper profiling and the correct thermal assessment of the capacity of the line. What I'm going to do now is to bring the line in. This is the line design, the optimization for this route. And we can see that the line is profiled to meet all of the clearance requirements throughout the route. And we can go to individual structures and check clearance at that location. So we can see that the clearance requirements are respected. What about the structural capacities? Well, to investigate this, we need to look into the structure models that we're using. We can look at the structure models in a bit more detail. For each structure model, we can see we have the geometry. We have the insulators, the conductor attachments. We can look for structure strengths. The structure strengths let us know the allowable wind and weight spans for each structure. So we can run reporting to ensure that the structural capacity and thermal clearances are respected. The reliability and the utilisation. In this case, the thermal rating assessment is carried out. We're just going to do it for the first 20 spans. And for those first 20 spans, we're looking to get better than 80 degrees C. And we're going to run our thermal rating assessment. It's completed very quickly. It tells us the worst case, that's a minimum thermal clearance. they are getting for these 20 spans is 97 degrees C. So that means that we've met all of the clearance requirements. We can also do a structural check. And that structural check once more, just do it for the first 20 structures. And we'll get our report. And we can see for those 20 structures, utilizations are all up in the 90s and 90%. So it's a very well optimized line. So in the structure database, we've assigned geometries and strengths for every potential structure type. 
the geometry and structural capacities that we saw earlier. But how do we know that we've done this for the least possible cost? Well, if we look at our structure database, optimization is going to check every structure in every location, and we can see the costs are assigned to each structure, and that these costs, as we'd expect, increase as the structures get taller, and also increase as the required angles of deviation of each structure get larger. So now, we're going to look at performing an optimization. We're going to optimize just a small section of this line. We're going to profile it for you, AAAC conductor. And we can see that the parameters that we're going to use for this optimization, it's going to try every possible tower in every possible location. Red lines that you can see at the bottom of the screen, those are spotting constraints. That means that we cannot site a structure there. An optimization is going to ensure the least cost to achieve the thermal clearance and respect the structural capacities. As you see, by carrying out this optimization, you get a significant reduction in costs. Here we can see a full animated visualization of the optimized line. Remember the key here is that we have tried every possible tower type in every possible location. And by this means we can guarantee this is the most cost effective way to construct the line while respecting the thermal clearances, structural capacities and geographic constraints. So let me thank you for your time and I trust that you will soon reap the benefits from using PLSCAD and LiDAR. Thanks very much.